Hi everybody and welcome back for another short clip of palliative education and today we're going to cover a really important topic and that's a safety issue around recognising opioid toxicity. A skill that's really really important if you're going to get competent at using opioids in your patients and doing so safely. So first concept that I really want to talk about is actually being able to recognize when your patient might be becoming toxic from the opioid medication that they're taking. And this is something that actually, um, when I'm teaching junior doctors, that there's a, a huge amount of confusion and um, often um, people, you know, associate opioid toxicity with, with cardiorespiratory decline. Um, and that's how they've been taught to sort of recognize opioid toxicity. Um, but actually in patients who are um, very opioid tolerant and have been on these medications for a long time, they have a different set of symptoms and it's really, really important to be able to recognize those. So there's really three core things to look out for when you're trying to assess whether your patient's um, opioid toxic. So we'll draw a triangle. Now, the first sign that, that most people don't actually have too much difficulty with recognizing is the presence of pinpoint pupils. That's usually the one symptom or sign that, that most people kind of go, yeah, I, I, I recognize that as being a feature of opioid toxicity. Um, it's not always present in all patients who are opioid toxic, but certainly if you've got concern about a patient and you look in their eyes and they've got really tiny pupils, well, that, that should be the first thing that might be alerting you that you've got a problem. Okay. The other signs and symptoms are the ones that people are perhaps less familiar with. The next sort of important thing to look out for is to do with the patient's mental state. Because inevitably, if a patient's becoming opioid toxic, they're probably going to have some level of confusion or diminished conscious level or hallucinations. Opioids if they're causing toxicity problems, will usually cause a delirium type picture. So that's the, that's the second thing to, to look out for. And the third part of our triad is the one that most people don't recognize. And the third thing to look out for um, is myoclonus. Um, so these patients tend to get myoclonic jerks of the muscles. And it's, it's, it's not a tremor, it's a very sort of coarse myoclonus of the limbs, so they, they kind of sort of do this with the limbs. Um, for the patients, if you ask them, it's kind of like that sensation that we all experience from time to time where you're kind of just slowly drifting off to sleep and then you wake up at the start because you thought you've fallen. Um, and that's exactly what patients describe. They'll just sort of feel that they, they just suddenly get this kind of sort of jerky movement of the limbs. So you put all those three things together, pinpoint pupils, some element of, of cognitive decline with myoclonic jerks. And if you see all those three features together, then your patient's probably opioid toxic. So that's the first important thing. How do you recognize opioid toxicity? Now, why does it happen? Um, you know, we're dealing with patients who are on um, opioid medication and they might have been on it for a long time. And then suddenly you're faced with a situation that they become toxic on their medication. So you do have to try and sort of work out as part of your management plan why they become opioid toxic. Now, one of the really big things that you need to be watchful for is the fact that opioids are excreted renally. 
So if you get renal impairment, that can have a big impact on your patient developing toxicity. And that could be just that the patient's become a bit dehydrated. Or the other things to watch out for, particularly in patients who've got an underlying malignancy, particularly intradominal malignancy, is just watch out for the patient who might have um, developed um, obstruction of a ureter and then has gone into acute renal impairment. Sometimes the fact that they've developed opioid toxicity is the first warning sign that that's become a problem. So renal function is important and being aware that renal impairment can lead to opioid toxicity is a crucial thing. Now the other thing that can happen sometimes is that actually you've had the patient on analgesia for some time and then the patient's pain changes. Now sometimes that's because we've actually uh, performed an intervention that's um, had a significant impact on the patient's underlying pain. And we do this all the time, um, but the common ones are the patient might have had radiotherapy and they've had a really profound result from the radiotherapy which means they've got less pain and then that means that the amount of analgesia they are on is surplus to requirements and they become toxic. Another one that can sometimes do it quite quickly is starting the patient on steroids. You get a really profound analgesic effect very, very quickly and then all of a sudden the patient becomes toxic. So that's another one to look out for. If you've done an intervention uh, that might have had an impact on the patient's pain, um, that can sometimes lead to opioid toxicity. Sometimes there are just a set of circumstances that change the pain that we weren't expecting. One of the classic examples is patients who've got an abscess or a fluid collection. Um, sometimes you quite commonly see this with patients who've got head and neck cancer. They'll, they'll develop abscesses which are incredibly painful and you've titrated up the patient's analgesia to try and uh, manage that pain. But the thing about abscesses is they've got this nasty tendency to burst. And when they burst, because all the pain has come from the stretch and the tension of the abscess, that pain goes away very, very quickly. And certainly it, it's, it's recognized that when you've got patients who've got fluid collections that suddenly have, have drained um, you can get a very, very quick uh, drop in the patient's pain and consequently the patient can go over your toxic very quickly. So, so there's a number of things you've got to be on the watch out for, some key questions that you've got to be able to determine when you see a patient who's opioid toxic and try and get an understanding what's going on. What's their renal function and has something happened that's fundamentally changed the nature of the patient's now, what do you do about it once you've recognised it? Obviously, if you've found um, some reversible cause, like some renal impairment, then obviously you might want to put the patient on a drip, you might want to give them some fluids to try and reverse that renal impairment, and that'll certainly help with, with clearance of the opioid. But really, it depends also on what's going on with the patient's pain. Now, let's take take an example which is perhaps the simplest um, uh, situation that you might encounter where you've got a patient, uh, you've recognised that they've become opioid toxic and because they've become opioid toxic they've actually got very little pain. You look at their drug chart and you know for the past 24 or 48 hours they've hardly needed to use any extra analgesia. Well, in that case, you've got a patient who's very, very well analgesed, they're toxic on their current medication, it's fairly simple to recognise what you need to do. You need to either reduce or stop completely their opioid medication. Let the opioid wash out of their system, then form a new baseline, um, and the opioid toxicity, if you do that, will dissipate over. Now, you might be asking, well, that's okay if the patient hasn't got any pain, but 
there are sometimes situations where you've got an opioid toxic patient and they've still got pain. Now clearly that then causes a dilemma because to deal with the opioid toxicity, we want to try and reduce the opioid, but if they still got pain, what do we do about that? Well, we have to take a different approach and the approach that we take is that that's where you switch the opioid. And I'm gonna talk a little bit more about opioid switching and how it works and how you do it in another video.